to be uh, happen to be that I am the 14th uh, PhD student from Milton's group, and I stayed with uh, Milton for a period between uh, 1997 to 90 uh, to uh, 2004. I don't know why I do my PhD for that long period of time, and. <laughs> And part of the reason is I joined his company in year 2001. Um, and that was a very nice experience for me. Um, and today, um, I would like to um, give you some uh, overview of what we have been done at uh, Illinois and uh, what, what I have been doing uh, at the Georgia Tech uh, with a focus on the three. 3.5 uh, microelectronics. So since I have been staying with the Milton for so long, uh, I learned a lot from the Milton. Um, the first thing I learned is uh, his English. <laughs> <laughs> or words of wisdom, right? So as many of you have known, Milton has a perfect English. And uh, the most famous one, I guess, is this. <laughs> For more harder, okay? At first, if you are not a very good English speaker, you will think this is a perfect English. And uh, once more, if you look harder and you take a harder as a noun, then this is a perfect English, all right? So, <laughs> great. So, the second famous word is do your job. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means, but uh, it was on the door. Sometime during the Saturday morning, someone didn't show up. Okay, and of course, they are more, but they are censored in this <laughs> classroom. So I'm very happy to communicate with you under the table of nine, and you will see what's going on there. But even though all of us experience a lot of verbal abuse from Milton, <laughs> <laughs> but down deep you will feel he, has, he is a very uh, sincere guy, and uh, he has the perseverance of uh, the pursuit of truth. And uh, throughout all of my study, I have been uh, influenced by two very important words or sentence from him every time he will ask you these two questions. Are you sure you are solving the right problem? Okay, And whenever you don't have data, don't even think about talking to him. So this, these two uh, philosophies uh, really guide through a lot of uh, research. And uh, as you see here, uh, Milton has done a lot of excellent work. And uh, I, I think he has a, a very good uh, uh, for philosophy in terms of uh, taking uh, advanced research uh, to move forward, okay? And uh, for the record, uh, if you happen to see uh, Milton's proposal, written proposal, not a presentation, uh, you will see that he is writing a perfect English. So the way I interpret this is that uh, Milton is a, a, a master of uh, communication as per he wants to use the imperfect English to draw your attention so you can work harder. <laughs> and uh, one of the influence he has on me is the hard working attitude. Okay? This uh, 9 o'clock Saturday meeting, yes. That's 8 a.m. Oh, it was 8 a.m. In my time, it was uh, 9 a.m. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's the time start right now. Maybe Friday morning? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> right. But it can be always be compensated by this uh, uh, very important meeting at Mandarin Walk. So, so it's a very, very, very uh, pleasant experience for me to work with uh, Milton uh, throughout all these years. So um, I'd like to uh, show a little bit of uh, what we have done here. And uh, I, when I joined uh, HSIC, at, uh, I think in uh, 1997, uh, this is my first job assignment, just sitting in front of a big furnace tube coated with a 
full of arsenic and try to smell it and try to stay alive. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the, the most famous CAT system. CAT, I think it stands for capitalist annual tube. Capitalist annual tube. So what we did is full a lot of arsenic and uh, uh, hydrogen and uh, annual the the implant, I only implanted a gallium arsenide uh, in a vertical flow so that they, they can activate the, the uh, uh, dopant to, to make H, uh, mass fat. And uh, we spent a, a lot of time doing uh, 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 this annealing uh, process established, I guess, by uh, Jeremy and uh, uh, our previous uh, uh, lab mate. And, uh, uh, this is a very good experience for me. I sit in front of this tube in the middle of night, have nothing to do but chat with my lab mate uh, with a day feature, and I actually learn a lot of uh, good English from him. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I can speak here today. So I really uh, owe a lot of appreciation to him. Okay, uh, with this I uh, implanted uh, getting our name as fat. Um, we have been uh, staying on top of the uh, uh, performance curve as uh, Pete shown uh, previously. Uh, and after he graduated, we're still working on this project. And uh, uh, we have been able to achieve uh, FT of uh, 142 uh, gigahertz with uh, uh, a valence of uh, uh, 120 nanometer. So this is uh, a state-of-the-art ion implanted uh, demo getting off my mass spread. If you had any chance to talk to any um, um, old guy, I should not say old in front of this event, right? <laughs> Young guy, <laughs> experienced guy. Um, say, for, for example, um, Dr. Chao, PC Chao at uh, uh, BAE, um, Last time I, I talked to him and he said, well, Milton, he just has a way to make HBT, uh, mass fat work, and no one knows how. And that's, that's Milton's uh, big contribution in this field. And we uh, are very fortunate to leverage this uh, technology to make uh, quite a few uh, MMIC here at uh, uh, UIUC. And uh, there's a lot of uh, folks uh, involved in this work. Uh, dealing with uh, uh, circuit design as well as uh, process. Um, fabricated here. Yeah, so all of them are made here and uh, um, we are building those circuits on a three inch gallon hours nine. So a lot of people say, well, you are the university guy, you cannot do, uh, I should not say shit here, should I? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we did it and uh, we repeatedly uh, demonstrated that if you have a good control of your process with the expert like Newton, you can always achieve something great even though this is uh, in a very uncontrollable environment. So uh, a lot of people uh, here probably doesn't, uh, don't know that uh, uh, Newton is also uh, holding a record for the Archman's uh, development in terms of a switch development. And uh, all of uh, these developments start with uh, this simple word. I think uh, sometimes he just think uh, a rookie doesn't know anything is a good place to put him in a very hot spot. And if it works, he can graduate, he cannot stay longer, right? <laughs> new, new student. New student, right. This so smart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, that is uh, the, the second job assignment uh, Milton gave me. Uh, at that time, I was not very interested in working on men's because Milton always discouraged these kind of activities. But apparently, uh, there is some opportunity there. So uh, he looked across the uh, fabrica uh, the fabricated uh, mesh devices. He figured out that uh, all of the f devices are operating at a very high voltage. And there is no point for you to operate a device, especially mechanical uh, devices, in uh, such a high voltage. It will only cause a mechanical failure. So. 
uh, we went on and uh, tried to figure out what can we do to achieve a low voltage mains devices. And uh, here's a patent, a uh, patent we filed um, uh, back in the uh, year 1999. And uh, this uh, device is called a uh, hinged main switch. And uh, what it does is uh, uh, we build a a uh, hinge structure to uh, to uh, to clamp a, a moving or freestanding uh, metal piece in between two uh, electro pads, so that you can use electro potential to control the the position of uh, the middle metal number seventeen here. Uh, so so this turned out to be a very stupid idea because. Um, if you look through this uh, structure, uh, there's one element missing, which is the ground. If there is no electrical ground to the middle metal plate, all you have is a very uncontrollable uh, system. They can be flipping up or down uh, just because of some electric charge. But we are pretty lucky to make it work, and the, the problem or the solution is that uh, the bracket here is actually uh, uh, in direct contact to the ground so the metal in some states they are uh, electrically grounded so you still can make a switch but this is not very good and so we spend uh, quite a few uh, time to figure out how to uh, fabricate this device how to optimize this device and it literally took me almost two, three years for zero result and in that regard, I really like to uh, acknowledge Milton's patience for, for tolerating a stupid student uh, doing nothing <laughs> for three years. And uh, uh, finally, we come to a solution. So uh, this, is, uh, this is what we have. Let's see if I can make it work. Uh, this is uh, the very first uh, arc main switch not working in the real operation mode. Uh, as you see here, the, the membrane in the middle is moving up and down, and by moving up and down, you can provide a, a shunt circuit down to the ground uh, in the middle pass. So, so um, later, uh, Richard, who is another stupid guy in uh, Milton's group, he did a measurement from a zero or 250 megahertz to the 100 gigahertz, and you can see that this main switch actually can outperform any of uh, uh, transistor-based uh, switch um, to date. And uh, um, that is not enough. In order for you to make this uh, useful, uh, you have to make it reliable. So um, Milton is a very uh, a uh, stubborn guy who will not give up very easily and even though he understand this is not a technology that is going to go anywhere he's still pushing the technology and you find out that he's the best in his field okay and uh, this is a uh, uh, reliability uh, data for the, the main switch as you see here uh, he can achieve the uh, operation voltage, actuation voltage less than 20 volts with uh, um, uh, 10 to the 9th of a switching cycle before you fail it. Um, this is a pretty uh, amazing and uh, uh, they also make a circuit out of it. Um, this is a 20 gigabit, uh, 20 gigahertz, uh, 1 bit, 90 uh, degree uh, phase shifter and fabricated by Newton's group. So, uh, like I said, this is not a very um, manufacturable technology, so I cannot wait to get out of uh, this uh, topic. So I got an opportunity in year 2001. Uh, <laughs> he asked me a question again, which I'm very happy. He said, do you want to work on uh, Indian Phosphorite BT and OIC? And of course, I would jump right ahead and say yes. So they are five guys who uh, join this team uh, as an engineer and I will call them a stupid five and among them there are Dave Kalus and Doris Chen who is here, Jeff Fan and Ang Thru and this stupid guy. <laughs> so we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to uh, 
uh, fabricate uh, inium phosphide HBTs in this uncontrollable uh, university lab, it turns out it's very controllable if you know how to deal with uh, the system. And uh, uh, we also work in different angles, try to optimize the device design as well as the circuit design. And uh, this is what we have. Uh, we uh, luckily demonstrate uh, the first monolithic uh, 40 gigabit uh, differential pin plus TIA integrated uh, receiver. And uh, um, through the process development, we can get uh, around 70, 60 percent of uh, um, a circuit yield with uh, this kind of uh, uh, tight control in the trans impedance. So, uh, so this is quite a few experience for me. Uh, in particular, um, as a graduate student and become a, a industry guy and in trying to uh, implement something that is useful for the future and try to see if I can make money. And it turns out why can I make money? So, like uh, <laughs> Andrea says, I had to help someone to make money. So that's why I, uh, in 2005, I'm very fortunate to have an opportunity to join Georgia Tech and work with uh, uh, Ross uh, to develop uh, three nitride-based uh, transistors. And uh, so far, uh, we are focused on three major areas in uh, transistor development. One is in the RF hand uh, devices. This is uh, uh, funded by uh, DARPA under the NNS program. And we are looking into a different vectors of uh, uh, transistor in the three nitride um, systems. And uh, power electronics is another uh, hot area. And in order for you to uh, replace uh, the current silicon component with a more efficient and uh, higher operation temperature uh, component, uh, getting nitride has become one of uh, uh, major uh, research topics. And uh, uh, on the side, we are also looking into uh, the possibility to push forward uh, the three nitride HBTs because uh, up to date, there are only a handful of uh, uh, research groups or companies uh, in the world that can really make uh, the HBT worse. And one of the pioneers is, of course, in the Milton's group. But uh, um, you will see we are trying to beat him up. Right. So uh, I think Ross showed him, uh, show us um, the this chart uh, previously, uh, and the, the material system we are working on is um, mostly on the L gain on top of a gain, and right now we have an opportunity to go up to use the indium aluminum nitride build on on top of gallium nitride, and the. The good thing about the sem uh, nitride semiconductor is that they are polar semiconductor. And uh, because they are uh, polar semiconductor, they have a spontaneous polarization. And if you build a heterostructure on top of it, they can uh, create a piezoelectric uh, polarization. And these two uh, polarization, if you lay a line properly, they are becoming additive uh, nature. And in the end, you don't need any uh, doping inside of this heterostructure and you still can create a two-dimensional electron gas. So that is, that is the idea uh, for the uh, three nitride uh, hemp development these days and most of them are working on an algen gain system. So here's an example for a, grid, a smart grid. Uh, the getting nitride technology fits very well into this uh, smart grid scenario. If you look at uh, uh, the future smart grid, you will see that um, they can, um, they can, uh, the getting nitride can be used in uh, various of uh, uh, power conversion uh, systems. If you look at uh, the down conversion uh, spot, you Currently, you have a, a very big transformers that is made of uh, a lot of uh, uh, wires, and you can, if you can have a way to uh, create a technology that can sustain uh, operation up to 200 degrees Celsius under the sun, then you have a way to uh, create or, or make a solid state transformers. 
And by making a solid state transformers, you don't even need these big transformers. You can embed your solid state transformers into a very compact system. And on the other hand, uh, you have a lot of new renewable energy uh, devices at home in the future. And in the uh, off-peak time, you want to sell those energy back to the grid, and those energy are not synchronized. So you have to have a digitally controlled uh, converters and regulators so that they can uh, in sync with uh, the grid. And in order for you to do that, silicon may work, but they are very lossy at present date. So uh, those um, issues has been addressed um, in the 3 uh transistors. So, Currently, I'm working on uh, a high-power uh, gallium nitride transistor development, uh, working with uh, Ross at the Georgia Tech. Uh, we are uh, tackle this problem from the material development as well as the device fabrication uh, aspect. And as you sh see here, this is a two-inch software wafer we made at the Georgia Tech uh, with a 10 amp device uh, built on top of it. This is a blow-up uh, version of uh, the 10 amp um, gallium nitride fed. This particular device can go up to uh, beyond 600 volts of breakdown voltage with a uh, uh, turn-on resistance of uh, uh, 0.6 ohm. Uh, this performance is uh, about 100 times uh, better than the, than the silicon devices, and uh, uh, this is. Uh, some uh, big areas of uh, the silicon polyelectronics sector is actively uh, looking into right now. So, another uh, device I am uh, working on is uh, uh, getting nitride BTs. I know um, if you are a in Eli who work on the semiconductor, and if you don't want to work on HBTs, this is a uh, pretty waste of uh, a resource. Right, because you know what uh, HBT is. So I just cannot help myself. And when I joined Georgia Tech, and I have a, a great opportunity to work with uh, Ross, and he has the best material in the world, and we uh, we are working on this getting nitro HBTs. But the problem with HBTs is not as simple. It's not mesa etching. You have to deal with a lot of surface state and the defect, and also a lot of uh, uh, processing related issues. So we uh, try to sort out uh, the processing module one by one. Uh, one of the effort we have been doing at Georgia Tech is try to find out a, a better uh, etching method so that you can uh, uh, modify or fix the, the surface roughness um, after the mesa etching. and. Uh, um, and it, it turned out to be very effective. And after that, we can uh, use a very simple process flow to make a, a very high performance HBTs. So this is uh, one of the, the best data we can show you today. Um, using the Indian gallium nitride as a base, uh, we can achieve uh, a current gain of uh, 110. Oh, I thought it was a 105. Um, with an uh, uh, emitter size of a 20 by 20. And uh, we can also operate this kind of device uh, up to a 40 volt at uh, a current density of uh, 5 kilo per centimeter without any device degradation. So this promises a, uh, a good potential for the gallium nitride species in the future. Uh, and uh, we are still trying to work on a uh, better device performance through uh, process optimization and in the hope that uh, in the near future we can show you the uh, art performance of uh, in-gain HBTs. So uh, here is a summary of a device um, performance for the in-gain HBTs. Uh, UIUC was the leader in this arena for many, many years and uh, it started from uh, year 2000. And JJ Huang, he, he demonstrated that um, the HBT can be made with uh, a very 
good performance with a gain around 20. And over the years, uh, Newton's group has been uh, trying to push the technology envelope by giving a uh, higher current gain and a higher current density drive. And uh, this is the, the, the technology trend UIUC can make uh, back in the year 2007. And uh, I am very fortunate to have uh, this opportunity to work on these HBTs. So right now, we can push the current gain all, all the way beyond uh, 100. And uh, the collector current can be over uh, 200 milliamp. Um, so uh, the next thing is to demonstrate the RF performance of HBTs. And if you are working on this technology, you know it is not that easy. It's not just one sentence, but uh, uh, many, many years of work to, to reach the next step. So uh, it's something we are working on. But overall, I'm very grateful that uh, Milton, he, uh, he has uh, uh, confidence in me to, to introduce me to this uh, semiconductor world and uh, teach me a lot of lessons. So, uh, as, yeah, that, 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 that's true. <laughs> yeah, we all speak perfect English, right? <laughs> so, uh, I, I meant to say a lot of good words about Milton, but uh, um, but he was he will probably don't want don't want me to say that he will say, well, don't kiss my butt, right? <laughs> so. So on his birthday, well, I, I meant to say happy birthday in different ways, but uh, I, don't, I hope you don't take it in a very offensive way, okay? So on your birthday, uh, this is my wish to you, okay? You, I hope you can get up early and strike a TLO, yo, okay? But uh, I know you will get up early by six because you are already 60 years old, <laughs> okay? Yeah. But uh, uh, this is what I would suggest. After you walk the dog, okay, and keep yelling at your folks with this word, <laughs> one more harder, okay? But uh, uh, the Chinese says that you can do everything at 60 years old, meaning that you can yell at your student, at the same time you can walk the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm... I'm expecting uh, many, many great things from you for the many years to come because uh, in a, another Chinese saying that um, your life only starts after 70 years old. So you are minus 10 years old. And I'm, I'm sure you have a lot to see. <laughs> okay, 60 years young. <laughs> All right, well, thank you.